Hi everyone. Been doing the disused platform this week. Stick around and I'll show you how I did it. Good morning everyone and welcome back to Piccadilly Sidings. Now this is the video I've been waiting to do for a while. It's the it's the weathering up of this platform and this area over here. So let's make a start. What am I going to do first? Well, it's got to be this area here because that puts the basis for that part down and then I can build onto it over spilling onto the platform. Let's make a start. Right, so welcome back. Now that's all the ballast I've got. Um, so that will be fine for that little bit in there. I've just placed that bit of track and it's certainly not going to stay there, but I'm just going to use part of the um, image as like a, te um, a template for, uh, for some missing sleepers, if you like. So I'm going to put the sand mix sort of over that and down in this area here. Bear in mind, a lot of this is going to be covered in grasses and weeds and all sorts of stuff like that. I'll put a bit more in there, just a little bit. And I just want to cover this general area. And as like I said, I can put grass over this area here, which should be absolutely fine, or a bit of grass anyway. All right, let's get that wet and remove that part of the track. All right, let's give it a little dog of water. Now if you remember I did an end gauge video with some ballasting in it. Seems to be all I, saw, all I seem to be doing ballasting at the moment but I um, said on that video I don't um, soak things first but I found with this woodland scenics ballast this the pale grey stones it needs it it moves uh, for some odd reason. Actually, I'll get a pair of pliers and we'll move that. Right, so you can probably see I removed that piece of track now. Um, it did come up with quite a chunk of the sand attached. So what I've done is literally just put it back down again and gave it a little tap and I've just emphasised the marks. So I'll now put a little bit more ballast on in the area to build it up I don't want to put so much on that I actually disturb that section there but uh, well, it's all right so far and now for the paint I am going to put in um, quite a dark mix into this bit because I want to indicate that this platform used to come across here and this track would come in and meet up with that. So this platform would have continued up this section here. So it's going to be quite dark and not black, but I want it to stand out a little bit as a quite a damaged area, if you like. And um, well, this track will be quite dark. Let's put it like that and um, we'll sort it from that way. Right, let's get some paint and I've mixed up the dark mix. Just going to pop that on now. I'm not going to spend very long doing showing you this because it's it's been the subject of quite a few videos of recent times. But literally, just dab it on, dab it on, dab it on. Being careful of that point. Literally, just dab it on. Now, like I said, I'm going to put. This is going to be a slightly darker area. And then I'm going to put a paler glue mix in the bit at the front. Right, well, that does look like a bit of a slop at the moment, doesn't it? But it'll be all right. Um, I'm hoping that tracks sort of um, come out okay. I think they will, 
uh, but sand does have a tendency to move. But um, anyway, I'm going to use a range of scatters now. I've got some brown, gratefully from my local model shop this past week, and one or two others. I'm not gonna go through showing you every single one because to be honest, everybody has their own choices. I'm not gonna put a massive amount of this on, but I do want an amount, so here we go. Just a tiny little bit, just to give an indication. Because I want this area now to be taken over with vegetation. So the flock will start soaking up some of this stuff. I'm gonna see a, a, a dry top to it, if you like. I know that with um, the flock has reached its saturation, if you like. I'm not gonna put a massive amount on, so I do want the, the um, ballast to come through. That'll do for that. Right, I've put an amount on. I'm really not gonna go overboard. I want it to be a hint. Now, whilst I'm at it, I might as well start putting a little bit down here. Um, again, just a hint. So I'm gonna spray that. I've got, I've got my um, watery glue mix. So just... I'm not gonna have a massive amount. Just a hint. Right, so now in preparation for the static grassing tomorrow, being careful of these, um, I'm going to put a little bit of uh, scatter over some of these areas here. Again, not a massive amount, because I'm going to put the, the uh, static grass into a number of these cracks and crevices. So I'm just going to put in the scatters over the top, just in the places where it would build up. So there would be a build up of moss around that area, but again, not all on, not all around it. I don't want it to look like I've just put a picture frame around it. So it's literally just a case of odd little bits here and there. All right, so I'm just gonna use some of these uh, little tufts that come from World, World War Scenics or WWS, I think they're called. So I'm literally just gonna stretch it out into little bits. Don't want it as big as it was and I'm literally just going to stick it down. All right, welcome back. It's the next morning. So I've armed myself with the static grass that I've got. So ranging from four mil down to two mil dead, some Alpine four mil there and some sample packs from World War Scenics. Um, so, and then my um, trusted steed. Yes, it's a very posh model. If somebody wants to send me one completely free, I'm happy to receive that. But um, this does me quite well. I'm not going to be spending that sort of money for the little amount I do of this sort of thing. So that's my thinking on it. That's cost me four quid to make that. And obviously the vacuum cleaner there with a very trusted sock. So anyway, let's make a start. Right, this area here, um, when I come back this morning, the, the water and the sand had done their thing and sort of smell is all out of it so I had to um, put the track back in and sort of pat it down so I've made more of a you can see more of the um, uh, texture of the track that was there now so what I'm going to do is put a little bit more static grass over this area a little bit more over the tracks tilt you down a tad and uh, so hopefully you can see what I'm doing I'll put you on to speed for this
right, that's where we are at the moment and you'll notice there's still a bit of grass to pick up. Now, because my um, static grass applicator is homemade and it's only working on two uh, AA batteries, so that's three volts, it's not that powerful. And so therefore a lot of the static doesn't go down as vertical. So what I tend to do, I won't turn it on, promise, but I then go in with the vacuum cleaner and then just literally just hover above and it actually pulls the grass up vertically. So that really, really does help. And not only pick up the dead, the stuff that I really don't want lingering around. So it works in two ways. Anyway, I'll finish this area off now and then we'll move on to the platform. Right, so now I'm going to move on to the platform itself. Now, one of the things I am going to do, it's more static grass, I'm afraid, but this is the way it is. So I'm going to put a heavier dose of static grass into these areas where there's uh, cracks and crevices to sort of build up the uh, texture layer that I put down yesterday. So it does start to look a little bit more sort of vertical. And then towards the end, I'm going to start adding a little bit more clump foliage and some long grasses as well. Um, probably up to about 10 millimeters um, because I do want them to be more than knee height and then put some flowers on the top of those as well that type of thing right so I'll make a start I won't um, make you sit through and watch it all live speed but uh, you'll get the idea this out of the way I want to go a bit further down the platform but getting static grass to go in there is going to be well almost impossible really because it's going to fall vertically and not go in at an angle so I'm going to use some of these um, these I made myself just putting a line of glue onto grease proof paper and then static grass that over the top and then just peel them off I also bought these from WWS. Uh, they are a bit thick and a bit too lush, but what you can do, if I just take out, it has got a sticky back, but you can pull it into a very fine slither and that way it's more usable. Uh, for the, the application that I want anyway. So I shall get um, a mixture of both of these put on down the sides here, both sides of this platform, and hopefully that should look a bit more realistic. Right, well, I'll get that done and I'll come back to you in a bit. You've probably watched me doing enough static grass, so I'll, I'll see you in a bit. Right, so the next stage is to use some of this field grass. This is um, woodland scenic stuff, I think. Um, so we've got gold and medium grey there. I'm going to use the yellowy more the yellow stuff on here so although i've put some quite rich greens on there as well it would there would be quite a lot of dead so i'm hoping to portray that with this and then in this area over here i'll use a mixture of both all right so just in case you're not sure or you've not seen this stuff before Pull out the amount you want. I'm going to do this in small amounts and I'm going to cut it reasonably short ish. And I'm literally just going to plonk it in the glue like that. And then when it's gone off, I'm going to put some glue on the tips and sprinkle some flowers on it. Actually, that's a bit on the ridiculous side, that one. As is that one. You see, you can just trim it accordingly. I found the um, with the static grass, the vacuum cleaner has been absolutely invaluable, um, allowing me to uh, cut the, to straighten up the grass. Really, it, uh, it really has made a massive, massive difference. There you go. 
Well, so I think by doing something like that, actually, I don't know if you can see that, just put some in down there, you get some, some quite decent height, bearing in mind a person is around about an inch tall in, in the burr gauge. So I think that's not an unreasonable size. You do get some very, very tall strands. And then once this is dried, I can just remove these odd little strands that have developed there. And like I said, we'll sprinkle some flowers on the top. So I'll put a few more in every now and again, um, particularly in this area here and around this side over there. I want it to be quite run down. It's looking, well, a little bit too clean at the moment. So I shall muck it up quite a bit more yet, I think. All right, I'll speak to you soon. Okay, next bit is to take some of this green polyfiber. Now I'm really only going to use the tiniest little bit. I really don't want this to be very much torn, but I do want it to be coming up, like weeds coming out of the side. So I'll put a couple of those bits in, a little bit more glue, a little bit on the top as well. And um, then I'm going to do something with the paintbrush. Right, this next little bit might seem a little bit unusual, but I think it might add something um, quite um, different, if you like. Now, I've got, I've got some brown, which is uh, that. And all I'm going to do is literally just going to streak some of these bits brown because I would like to represent Budlia. And um, once it's dried, I'll go over it with some red um, flock. And I think it would just make um, a bit of a difference. I'll do it to uh, two or three different ones. So maybe a little bit down here. Now it is bringing a little bit of the um, bits off. They're not quite set, but it'll be all right. So something like that really, just to give a little bit of contrast, a little bit of uh, tone change because it's all very mid green, pale green, if that makes sense. And it just needs something a little bit different uh, just to sort of break up the tones a little bit. So I'll do a few more, let that dry, and then we'll come on and put some leaves on. Okay then, so what I'm going to do now is literally just, just streak a little bit over the tops and especially over that bramble stuff just there, just sort of dab it on. So the glue goes in lots of different places, but try not to get a big blob of it. Like that. I think, um, I mean, I've, we've, I mean I've, I've done brambles before, particularly even on this layout, I've done brambles, uh, but uh, it does, it does make a difference. Now, that bit there, where I'm putting the brush and there, I'm going to treat that as a bit of buddlia. Oops, there's a random bit there. I'll put a little bit more on that. Yeah, don't worry about that doll upon the track, it'll dry. In fact. Like that. This is the um, sawdust that I did the other day, or a few weeks ago. I'm literally just gonna take a little bit and just sprinkle that over the top because it's quite big, if you know what I'm saying. It's probably very similar to the type of stuff you'd get um, described as weeds. Like that. And just a little bit of droppage 
around the outside. And now the actual buddlier stuff I'm going to use again, sawdust bringing it in, which is red on this occasion. And I'm literally just going to sprinkle that over the top, hoping to catch the tops of the leaves and I can soon vacuum up what doesn't catch because there's quite a lot going on down below if you know what I'm saying. All right so I'll just vacuum that. There you go so there's the um, buddleia, um, my representation of the buddleia so I will do that across the rest of this and I'll come back to you shortly. So there it is. So you can see the flowers on the top and the buddleias. We've got some brambles here, grasses all around, all down the bottom here, grasses, more grasses down there. Okay, more buddleia, just weeds everywhere, all in the cracks of the tarmac where it's broken up where there's been divots or th where the frost has got in, all those sorts of places. Still needs a little bit more in this area between the tracks. Little bit, not much. And then moving up to the area between the uh, disused rail. Still need to do this area here, probably a similar sort of affair to what's here. But again, very similar, but a little bit more overgrown. And then again, I'll just move these trucks so you can see more down by the buffers. Okay, well, I hope you like that. And uh, just a quick update with the regards to the 33. Um, although I love it, it's a great model. It sounds brilliant. I'm loving the sound it's making, particularly as it's pulling away. I have had one or two issues um, and it would only be fair to tell you. Uh, one of the bulbs uh, started to dim, the headlight bulbs, and then blew. So, because I think one of the problems with it is because Helgen have used grain of wheat bulbs. And I thought, ooh, that's not going to be good. But four days later, one of them had gone. So how long is the other one going to last? I don't know. So I took the decision to replace them with LEDs. And if I take you around the front, there you go. You can clearly see the white lights that I've fitted there. Those are now LEDs in there. And also if I take you around the back, excuse my finger there. Take you around the back, take you around the back. You might just be able to make out the red lights just there as well. Now, forgive me. Uh, yeah, and also the high density light has gone a little bit red as well, but I'm really not that worried, to be honest. Um, please forgive me. A number of people have said that this locomotive does not have red lights. Um, I'm sorry to be contrary, but it does. Um, I've seen photographs of this particular locomotive, D6515, uh, which is running on a, pre a preserved line. And occasionally makes it out onto the main line as well and I've seen photographs with it having red lights so forgive me for that but that's one of the reasons I've fitted them so um, other things I've found is that some of the pickups are not always touching the wheels I've had it stop on that point just there which is the insole frog um, but again I've just cleaned the points cleaned the track cleaned the wheels and it seems to be you know I don't know whether it's going to be a constant thing um YouTube supposedly put a, a stay alive in this but I've got I don't know whether I've got to activate a CV to get that working 
Again, if somebody knows, otherwise I'll give them a ring next week and just ask the question. But uh, it's not a problem. The other thing I've done, which you may or may not notice, is the exhaust port just there. The, the port that was on it had this like plastic mesh or wire grill over the, over the top and it really didn't look quite right for me. So I've drilled a couple of holes with a bit of a file as well, chopped it out and then also put that little cap on the top there, just, just like this particular locomotive has. And I think that looks pretty good. I'm liking that. So that's that's about it. And there's another thing that's happened to the layout as well. In the light of that 33, there's been an extension. John, you said you would never extend this layout. Well, don't get too excited. I'm bringing you over to the fiddle yard. Bringing you over, bringing you over, bringing you over. Behind the scenes, behind the scenes. I'll even put this little lamp on for you. This one. Oh, well, I would if it was plugged in. Let's put it like that. But the fiddle yard has been extended. Yes, it has. And you might be able to make out that little shadow running across there. So that is the extension. I know, it's very exciting. And you might say, well, why have you done that? Well, going back to the 33 with those two coaches, sadly, it was about an inch too short, inch too long. So that little extension I've put in there takes it pretty much to the walls, almost touching them now. And it's just enough room to get that in and operate the traverser. So I'm really, really happy. OK, anyway, I'm going to finish the video there. So the top video will all be about that 33 as it arrived last week. And the previous one, I or the bottom video, I think will have something to do with the scenics that went in over that section just there. Take care of yourself. See you soon. Bye for now.